5.2, the addition rule and complements. The first term we need to look at is mutually exclusive. Two events are mutually exclusive when they are disjoint. So mutually exclusive and disjoint are the same thing. And this means that events that there are events that cannot occur at the same time. So um, the probability of E or F is equal to the probability of E plus the probability of F. For example, the probability of drawing a jack or an ace from a deck of cards. Well, you can't draw a card that is both a jack and an ace. So these two events, drawing a jack, drawing an ace, are disjoint or mutually exclusive. Okay, because you can't draw one card that is both at the same time. Okay, so the probability of drawing a jack is 4 out of 52. The probability of drawing an ace is 4 out of 52. So you add those two probabilities together and you get 8 out of 52, which um, simplifies to 2 out of 13. And so drawing a jack or an ace um, are mutually exclusive. Those, those events are mutually exclusive. The general addition rule is basically um, very similar to what we just did with mutually exclusive, um, but the general addition rule can be used when they're not mutually exclusive, when they can both occur at the same time. Okay, so again, this is the, the probability of event E or event F, and it's still going to equal the probability of, of event E plus the probability of event F, but then we're going to subtract the probability of them occurring at the same time. Okay, so an example of this would be the probability of drawing a queen or drawing a club out of a regular deck of cards. Okay, so first the probability of drawing a queen is 4 out of 52. The probability of drawing a club is 13 out of 52. And there is one queen that is also a club. So that probability of drawing that, that queen that is a club um, is 1 out of 52, so we subtract that one. Um, so then when we simplify all that together, we get 16 out of 52, which simplifies down to 4 out of 13. Now, this can be used with mutually exclusive events or disjoint events. Um, the only difference is you're not going to have anything to subtract because the two events cannot occur at the same time. So if you just want to remember the general addition rule, um, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Um, because that will work in all circumstances. Just remember that if they are mutually exclusive, then you're subtracting zero from it because those two events cannot occur at the same time. All right, so now we're going to take a look at contingency tables, or we also refer to them as two-way tables. Okay, and this is when we have um, a set of data. Uh, you can see on the um, the, the row variable um, that we have, the occupational groups, uh, scientists and technicians, uh, medical and health services, and teachers. So those are the row variables. And then we have column variables, and those are the activity status, employees, employers, own account, workers, um, and then we have the total. Okay, and so we're going to take a look at how uh, to read a contingency table. So if we wanted to look at the number of scientists and technicians who are employees, then we find that cell where the scientists and technicians overlaps with the employees column, and we find that number. So if we want to say, well, what is the probability of randomly drawing an employee out of all the scientists and technicians? Then when we take that 169 and put it over 330, because 169 is the number of times that employees and scientists and technicians overlap, and then the total number of scientists and technicians is 330. So that's how we can read a contingency table. All right, so now let's take a look at the complement rule. If E represents any event, and that e to the c, that that's represents the complement of e, then the probability of the complement is equal to 1 minus the probability of the event. Now, we use this symbol e to the c. It's not really an exponent, 
Um, we can also denote it with it with a bar over top, E with the bar over top, but we don't want to get that confused with the sample mean, so we don't use that. But you might see that in other circumstances. Um, sometimes you might also see E prime, um, which is basically an E with a, an apostrophe, and then also um, the little squiggly mark in front of the E, and we can talk about that more in class. Uh, but in this class, we're going to do the E to the C. That's the notation that we're going to use. Um, Okay, so let's take a look at what this looks like. So if we have this Venn diagram, so within the rectangle, that's the entire region of all the possible outcomes, okay? Inside the circle, we have the event occurring, and then the white space that's still inside the rectangle but outside the circle, that's the complement of E. So everything inside that rectangle are all the possible events, okay? And anything that is not the event E is its complement. So that total region would have to be one. The probability of occurrence of anything in that region has to equal one. And so that's why our equation is the probability of the complement is equal to one minus the probability of the event. All right, so let's take a look at an example. All right, so according to the American Veterinary Medical Association, 31.6% of American households own a dog. What is the probability that a randomly selected household does not own a dog? All right, so we want the probability of the households that do not own a dog. Own a dog. So we take one minus the probability of the households that do own a dog. And we know that that probability was 0.316 because that study told us that. When we subtract that from one, we get 0.684 which is about 68.4, which is 68.4% um, of households do not own dogs. Let's take a look at another example. In a fun size pack of M&M candy, there are five red, six blue, three yellow, three orange, four green, and six brown. What is the probability of randomly selecting a green M&M? What is the probability of randomly selecting an M&M that is not green? Okay, so remember our probabilities, and this is the same data that we used in section 5.1. So again, we know that this is a probability model because it all added up to 1. All the probabilities add up to 1, and all of the probabilities are between 0 and 1. All right, so the probability of select, randomly selecting a green M&M is 0.15, okay? So we could to find the probability of selecting one that is not green, we could just add up all the other probabilities to find that answer, or we can say, well, one minus 0.15 would be the probability of, not, of choosing one that's not green, so 0.85. Either way, you get the same answer. The adding takes a little bit longer, um, but you still get the same answer, so either method is totally fine.